Hello, my name is Ann Brock. I'm a pre-sales consultant here at Right Star Systems, and I just wanted to give you an overview of Remedy Force. It's been a while since we've done a general recording, so we thought we'd go ahead and do one. I've been working with Remedy Force pretty much since it came out in 2010. I did go to BMC in 2001, worked with the Remedy Solution, as well as Remedy Force, came over to Right Star a couple of years ago. Remedy Force has come a long way since 2010, and hopefully this video will give you an idea of what the power is. For those of you that haven't heard a lot about Remedy Force, Remedy Force is an IT service management solution sitting on top of the Salesforce platform. Salesforce and BMC got together back 2009-2010 to go ahead and bring out this particular solution. BMC, of course, is a leader in the IT service management market, and Salesforce is a leader in the platform market. The power of that platform means you have seamless upgrades, and any changes that you make are done through metadata. So as you make changes, add fields, change configuration, etc., that is maintained on upgrades. What do you get when you get Remedy Force? Well, you get everything you see on this slide, and we're not going to have time to get into everything today. But if you do need a fuller demo, please let us know, and we can always give you a longer demo. The key thing is you get all the self-service capabilities, as well as the ITIL incident problem change release capabilities in the back end, as well as a very robust CMDB, configuration management database, where your assets can be stored. Uh, along the bottom, we'd just like to mention the App Exchange. Salesforce has an App Exchange, appexchange.salesforce.com, where 3,000 plus applications, widgets, integrations have been published. A lot of people have integrated with Salesforce that are actually on App Exchange. So if your question is, can I integrate with XYZ? The answer is usually yes. We just need to find out if it's been pre-built or if we need to build it. Okay, so what does Remedy Force look like these days? I'm going to start off in self-service. I'm logged in as a user called Jackson. Jackson can see some broadcasts scrolling across the top, so maybe he doesn't have to put in a ticket. But his concern today doesn't have to do with this broadcast. It's his email box. It's too full. Jackson can't send any more email, or at least he's getting a lot of warning messages about it. When he starts typing that in the search window, as we saw up left, he immediately gets some knowledge articles. So Remedy Force includes a knowledge-based structure, and you can populate it with knowledge articles for your support staff and for your end users, slice and dice the, the permissions, of course. And so Jackson can easily see there are some things that could help him manage his box. Jackson says, forget that. He just wants a bigger box. So he's going to go ahead and do the basic submit a ticket. Email a box. Oh, can't type today. Email a box to full. Need larger outlook. OK. Now you notice here I only made one field required, and I've showed about uh, one, two, three, four fields. You can configure this form to have the fields that you want on it. The key thing is a submit a ticket or submit an incident form is a pretty basic form. It's the same thing every time. Get the key things out there, submit it, and it goes back into the queue where someone can work it. And we're actually going to take this ticket through a couple steps to take it to close. So Jackson submits this ticket. He could have done it by email as well. Ends up in the queue over here in the Remedy Force world. I can go to my console and see what ticket came in. Now, emails are shooting out. Jackson got an email with his ticket number, his incident number. As a member of the um, queue that got this ticket, I can also see it, and I got emails. And I can come in and say, okay, Jackson, what's going on? One of the first things I'm probably going to do as a support analyst is look at smart suggestions. Just like Jackson got some information out on the self-service portal, I can come here and see some information as well. I can see that same knowledge base article Jackson saw. I could bring it up here, but I'm actually going to copy the article link. I've been doing this a little bit. I know that's a really good knowledge article, and I know Jackson didn't bother reading it. So I'm going to go ahead and link to that knowledge article, so now my knowledge managers know that it got used again. And I'm going to go ahead and email that link to Jackson. So within the ticket, I can go ahead and create an email. I can use email templates if I want to for some of the standard lingo, but I'm going to go ahead and type it in. Please check this out. And I can go ahead and click on this copy data box, right click, and find that. So all my fields are available to be brought into the email message. It's not just the um, out of the box fields, but also custom fields as well. In this case, I'm going to do the resolution, send it, and I'm hoping Jackson's going to look at that. Your, your process may change, but just to show how easy it is to close a ticket, 
I'm going to go ahead and do a quick close here. And maybe while I was working that ticket, I next got a phone call, and somebody called me. Uh, we're going to pick on Luke this time. Luke called. He just adopted a baby, and he needs to get to the benefit site. You can see that uh, Luke has that very important client piece there. So I'm going to be make sure I take good care of him. And I'm going to go ahead and use a template this time to create this ticket. Templates are great for fast tickets and also for data quality. I want everybody taking this ticket the same way with the same category, the same impact and urgency. And then because this is fairly simple, I've got the URL right there. It's got automatically closed. I save it after reading off the URL to Luke. <clears throat> of course, he can get an email with the details as well. So next time he can go ahead and find that particular URL. Okay, I'm going to go back to that self-service portal where Jackson is. Show a couple other things we can do out here. One of them, of course, is, well, Jackson's trying to get into the billing system. He needs to pay some vendors before he leaves for the day, but he can't log in. So now instead of doing that simple ticket, he's going to use the billing system issue and start typing in some things. Now, this, what you see here, the questions you see here are configurable by you, drag and drop, data, no programming, and they can be conditional. So if I open up development, uh, another field opens up. If I go back to production, that field disappears. Very easy to add those. These on the bottom are some I've added in prior demos. Key thing is you're going to get some information from Jackson right up front about what he's trying to do, but still goes ahead and creates a ticket in the back end, gets a sign, emails go out, all that kind of thing. The final one I'm going to bring up here is onboarding a new employee. And again, a lot of questions now, right? When we're onboarding, we've got a whole lot of questions we want to ask. So I might want to go ahead and fill in some of these. Maybe Jackson has somebody who's going to go ahead and come aboard and take over his billing duties. So he's really happy about that. And again, based upon when I pick, other fields can, be, other fields can become available, other choices. And in fact, I can even do some approvals from here where based upon when I pick, I might have something go automatically to an approval. So whatever you're doing, whether it's very simple, whether it's complex, it can be done on the self-service portal. I can even do something like a room reservation, which might go to facilities from the same portal. And the assignment rules in the background make sure that it goes to the right place. So here's an example of just saying, I need some stuff, I need a particular room, start end, etc. So whatever you put out here, you can make sure it gets to the right place in the back end for somebody to work on that ticket. We're going to take a quick look on the back end on what those tickets look like coming in. And we can see here there's that URL that came in, it's closed, the logging in, and the new employee one. I can take a brief glimpse at this new employee one to show what happened when that one came in. That one actually kicked off more than one ticket. If I look at my Smart View, this uh, button up here, I can see it kicked off a whole lot of tickets. A lot of things going on back here. I can put notes out here if I want to add a note into one of these. How is this going? And I can see what's going on there, see the status, see what kinds of things are happening. I can also look at this as a manifest, if I prefer, so I can see things laid out more in a grid. So a lot of tasks got created, a couple change requests, signed to different groups, etc. So a very powerful fulfillment object or fulfillment provisioning system from that simple self-service. I'm going to now quickly walk through the billing system one. And really just to show the ITIL process. So I come in, I've got the billing system on going here. I'm working on that. Maybe I'm not quite sure what to do. So I can go ahead and do a knowledge search, which is going to search more than just the knowledge base. It's actually going to search multiple areas. So it's going to search knowledge articles. It's going to tell me that I actually have a broadcast open. We know the billing servers, server is down. Maybe there's a problem record already open on this, so I can link to that problem record. Or, of course, I can look at that knowledge article and bring that into my ticket as well. So I've got a needs to be restarted. Need to open a change request. Go ahead and submit it. And that text is going to be put into here. And if I was going to link to the broadcast, I could do that, that field right above there. And the key thing on this is if I link to a broadcast, when the broadcast closes, all the related tickets will close as well. So a really nice feature if you're having a bad Monday, a lot of tickets coming in against the same thing, link them to the broadcast. 
broadcast closes, everything closes as well. Of course, I can link tickets to other tickets, and I can do other kinds of linkages as well, but kind of key about that. I mentioned ITIL process. We saw that problem record. So I'm going to go ahead and come down, and down here is where I'm going to go ahead and link to that existing problem record. I could also create a new one down here. And problem, of course, is for the root cause analysis of what's going on, so I can try and reduce the number of incidents in the future. Why does our billing application server keep going down? We probably want to find that out. And now if I look at the problem record, my problem managers can start analyzing this. They can look for other related incidents. And of course, they can create a change record from the problem record. So a lot of the full ITIL flow, if you want to use that, is part of the solution. Click on Details. And down here, I can see here are the incidents that were linked to this problem. And here are changes. Hopefully, on your problem records, you're not creating quite so many changes. But in demo environment, we can get quite a few going. Here's where I could go ahead and create a linkage change request to the problem and continue that ITIL process. Not going to do that today. Change has some amazing things. But we're trying to keep this fairly short. So incident to problem change, part of the solution. A lot of good tools in the incidents to help you. You can do things like have different layouts for your incident records. So your facilities team might have a, a layout that's very different from what the IT team has. A lot of cool capabilities, all done through configuration, and powerful workflow engine behind here if needed. But the last thing we're going to really discuss today is reporting. The, um, we leverage the Salesforce reporting engine, which is very nice because when it gets upgraded, it's immediately available, and it's also very easy to use. For those of you that are Crystal users out there, I've had users link Crystal reports to their Salesforce org, so that is available as well. I'm not a Crystal person. I like the Salesforce reporting. There are, of course, a bunch of, box, a bunch of uh, dashboards that come out of the box that you can go ahead and do. I'm going to go ahead and click down on this Priority 1 Incidents Report to show a couple modifications. So I've got a uh, report that's by um, priority. Maybe I want it by category. So all I have to do is take this existing report, summarize it by category, show all the incidents, and now I have a report by category instead of by priority. If I don't want just priority one, I can go ahead and clear that filter. If I want to modify this report, I can go ahead and come into Customize, and I can do things to this report. Uh, so let's say I want to do a report of categories by month. And this is an actual report a customer asked us to do. He had eight reports he did every month that took him a full week out of his existing system. So we recreated these eight reports in Remedy Force. I only had to use one custom field. It took me a couple hours. And from then on, they could have been scheduled to run at the end of the month, and he would have saved himself a week. So again, very powerful reporting tool. I like to show this one because I learned something when I did this one. I was wondering, how was I going to get dates by month? All I have to do is come in here and say group dates by month. And voila, it's done. I'm going to go ahead and group my categories by record count descending. I'm going to go ahead and add a chart here. And I'm going to do a hover over. So I get that chart going. Let's group by category. And do OK. So now I have something going here. Uh, just to save our eyes on the next screen, although I could, of course, select it on the next screen. I'm going to say the date range is going to be current and previous fiscal quarter. Okay, let's go ahead and run that report. And voila, we have that report. My category is marching down by month. So very easy to go ahead and create reports, modify reports, and make sure people don't have to wait six months for the report team to get used to it. Now, I've been working with what's called the classic view. And I know some of you are in Salesforce orgs with the Lightning experience. Absolutely, you can run Remedy Force within the Lightning world. It gives you a different kind of look and feel. Advantages to Classic, advantages to Lightning, so we won't go into those there. But I did want to go ahead and show you Remedy Force in the Lightning world. Again, I can go ahead and bring up my dashboards and go in and modify reports in the Lightning interface as well. And if I want to get to my Remedy Force console, here it is in the Lightning experience. So whether you want to work in Lightning or you want to work in Classic, both of those are available with Remedy Force. Your choice. I have it set up so my users can choose whether to use Lightning or Classic, because I like to switch between them. Up to you if you allow people to switch or you leave them in one view or the other. So that was today's quick demo running through uh, Remedy Force. And 
as I said, that was pretty quick. There were a lot of areas we didn't hit, such as change, service level agreements, a whole lot of things. Didn't talk too much about the CMDB either. But hopefully that gives you an idea of the overview of our mini force. And if you want a deeper demo, please do contact us, and we'd ha be happy to do that for you. Thank you for your time. Have a great rest of your day.